What's up guys? Welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews and we have got something special for you today. You will be getting two for the price of one. What am I talking about, of course? I am talking about the Carnegie Fighting Dilophosaurus figures. This video goes out to Raptor Riot who requested this review. Thank you so much for that. We are going to give you the review you asked for right here and right now on Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the rearing Dilophosaurus here. As you can see, mine still has his card attached, with I, which I think is pretty cool. On the inside, it tells you all about the process of making the figures and it gives you some awesome facts about Dilophosaurus and you can see the logo right there on the back. But with this figure as you can see there's really not a whole lot going on in detail. Um, the teeth aren't really all that well sculpted in that mouth but they did include that classic sort of niche in the jaw there which may have helped the Dilophosaurus hold struggling prey. The crests are not all that well accentuated on this figure which is kind of a disappointment. That's what Dilophosaurus is known for um, and to have it sort of be an afterthought really is a bit of a letdown. You've got some lovely wrinklage on the neck though as the creature opens its mouth. Going down the body at the arms, the shoulder area, you've got some more skin wrinkles. Going down the arms, there's really not a lot of sculpted musculature in there. Um, but you have got the claws there, which is, they're painted in that same weird way as the Spinosaurus with the gray base and then the black tip. Going down the body, you've got more wrinkles. There's no scales on these figures, it's just the wrinkles. You've got a very powerful looking thigh coming down into a leg that isn't all that impressive with the anatomy. And then that comes down to the curl of the tail, which is used to help the figure balance. As you can see, there's really nothing stand out about this figure. As you can see, the paint job is done in a way that really helps to bring out all of the wrinkles that they sculpted in, which is, you know, pretty darn awesome. My only grievance with the paint job, the hearts. It's like a dinosaur that you could give to your love on Valentine's Day. Say, come up with some cheesy dinosaur pickup line and give them this because it's covered with hearts, which I think is just ridiculous. Um, I think they could have done, I mean, they kind of did just, you know, regular old circles, which I think is much better than doing hearts, especially on dinosaurs that are meant to be fighting each other. They're not in love. They want to rip each other's throat out. <laughs> oh, right. Review. Review. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, really, that's all there is to the standing one. Let's go ahead and bring in the crouching Dilophosaurus. And as you can see, this one is really the same story. There's not a whole lot of detail going on in that mouth area. There's some lovely wrinkle, wrinkles going on on the neck, which is great to see. The crest feels a little bigger on this one. Um, going down the neck, you've got more lovely wrinkles going down and around the gut. The wrinklage there is very nice. Again, there's no scales. You're just relying fully on the wrinkles. The hands look a little better on this one, too. A little more spindly, the arms. And the legs, there's a little more definition in the calf region. And the thighs look just as good as the last one with some lovely sculpted musculature. And again, this figure is a tripod using its front arm there to help it balance. But you come back and you've got this nice swoosh in the tail. Really, it's the same story as the last one with some improvements here and there. Um, and it's got the same paint job with the browns used to accentuate the wrinkles. And then the red dots, dots ringed with the brown. And then the hearts. Oh, the lovely, lovely heart. How cheesy. How cheesy to see on a Dilophosaurus, a vicious figure. I mean, no one knows what dinosaur, what color dinosaurs were for the most part, but I, I just doubt that they had hearts on there. I, I have no idea where they came up with that, or even if they realized what they were doing. That's my biggest grievance with these figures. Um, real quick, I'm gonna bring in, I have a second one of these, but as you can see, they are very different looking in make. Um, they're the same sculpture, yes, but the paint job is just very different. I'm not sure if this one is a later version or if this was just, since I, I think they were hand painted, maybe it just was hand painted so it differed slightly from this one. But I mean, this one, this one at least looks like it's in the same style 
as the rearing one, and then there's just this one who looks like it doesn't fit with either of them. It's kind of weird. So anyone in the comments below who knows anything about this sort of paint, this sort of different colored version, let me know if there's anything to know or if I'm just sort of romanticizing the idea too much. It very well could just be a different hand-painted version, but even the teeth on this one look a little better painted than the teeth on the other two. I mean, they stand out a little more as individuals. If my camera, there's the focus. And then on this one, you don't see that them quite as well. They're not as narrow or sharp looking. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the story is. The crest even looks to be painted differently. Let me know if any of you know anything about these figure, if that, about this version, or if there is anything to know, let me know down in the comments below. I sure would appreciate it. But yes, really, that's all there is to the look of these two Dilophosaurus figures. They're really nothing incredible. I know they're one of Carnegie's oldest um, pieces. I think they came out with the first wave, but if you're gonna get them, I highly recommend tracking them down together. You have to get them, you have to get the pair, otherwise they just don't stand up that well on their own. If you took away this figure, this one just looks like it's just rearing up. If you put in this figure, it just looks like it's looking around. They really do shine when they're a unit because it does look as if they were sculpted in a fighting position, which is pretty cool. But as far as Carnegie goes, I think this is one of their weaker showings, even for the fact that it was so long ago. Well, actually, no. Thinking about it, I mean, they had the big green T-Rex. They had the Brachiosaurus. Honestly, I don't think this, these are that bad compared to the rest. I don't think it's they're necessarily weaker. In fact, I think they're stronger. I mean, they're better than the Spinosaurus, the old Carnegie Spinosaurus. They're better than the T-Rex. Um, but yeah, get a, if you're going to get them, you have to get the unit. That's really all I have to say about these guys. Let's do some sizing for you. So just how big are these figures? Well, let's bring in our ruler and find out, shall we? So for the standing one, from the base all the way to his highest point, you're looking at just over three inches tall. And then from length, you're looking at right around uh, four and a half inches. For the squatting figure at its highest point, which is going to be the tail, you're looking at right around three and a half inches off the ground. And as far as length goes, let's see here, you're looking at right around four four and a quarter inches long. So yes, um, kind of smaller figures. Um, maybe that's why they didn't do as much of their um, classic detailing. I don't know. Um, but that the issue with that is, I think they were bought together, but since they were smaller, I'm sure kids had the tendency to lose them. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna find these two, I think your best bet would be in a lot, buying one in one lot or the other and the other in another lot. Because if someone has both of these together and they say, hey, I've got them both, they're going to charge you more. I think you're better off hunting for them separately and hoping to get lucky. But hey, if you can find them together for a cheap price, by all means, go for it. Let's do some size comparisons for you guys. To start off, we're going to go ahead and bring in Safari Limited's edition of the Dilophosaurus. And as you can see, this figure is much, much bigger than... Oh, oh, collateral damage. The two fighters are down, felled by the mighty Safari Limited version. As you can see, he does sort of tower over these two models. And really, the, 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 the funnest part about doing this comparison is just seeing how far we have come when it comes to making dinosaur models. I mean, just look at the difference in these two figures. I mean, it really is just leaps and bounds ahead and done in such a different style. Um, so much more lifelike, so much more convincing, so much more accurate. All of that has just improved tenfold over the years, which I think is pretty cool to see reflected in these comparisons, especially with the older Carnegie figures. Next up, we're going to go ahead and bring in my knockoff Papo Dilophosaurus, and you can see how these two figures size up next to each other. As you can see, the fighting Dilophosauruses are even are taller than Papo's edition, at least in the head region. Um, but the Papo version is much 
longer and much more sturdily built, and again, much more appealing to the eye than the Carnegie versions. Um, really, yeah, that's all we have for comparison for this species, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, that about does it for that. Well, that will just about do it for our look at the Carnegie Fighting Dilophosaurus figures. Individually, these figures are really- oops, went a little too far. These figures are really nothing all that great. I mean, they're not that amazingly sculpted, they're not that amazingly accurate, there's really nothing that stands out about them. And then the heart paint jobs, ugh, you know, I mean, but together, they kinda shine just for how cool they look since they do look like they were designed to be fighting each other, which is pretty cool if and you ask me. You, you so rarely see dinosaur toys that are meant to be together, and this is an example of figures that are definitely meant to be together. But all that in mind, I think I'm still only gonna give, individually, I think I'm gonna give the standing version a 5 out of 10, and the squatting version a 6 out of 10. And then together, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and give the set a 6.5 out of 10, because they really do shine when they're together. They make for dynamic setups on your shelf, or dioramas, or dinosaur toy photography, and young ones can certainly have fun playing with the two, but really, that's the only way that they are worth it, if and you ask me, is together. But of course, I want to know what you think. Are you a fan of the Fighting Dilophosaurus figures? Do you own them? Are you going to try to track them down? What's your favorite Dilophosaurus model that's been produced? Let me know all of your thoughts on that down in the comments below. And don't be afraid to leave a request for another video. Um, we love making the videos that you guys request. Really, we do this for you guys. This is not for us. This is for you, so don't be afraid to ask us to make a video. We most likely won't say no, unless it's a prehistoric mammal, which we don't really do on this channel. We might start sooner or later. I'm, I'm starting to feel like it's going to happen. Um, but any dinosaur figure ever, unless it's like the Batat Diplodocus, we will try to get a review done for you guys. I promise, don't be afraid to ask. But if you think we did well with this video, don't be afraid to hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out so that you don't miss any of our future reviews. We love you all very much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Killer Shrew Fan, out. <laughs>